Tales of Beetle the Bard, The Fountain of Fair Fortune, Part 3. The sky burned ruby, and it was time to decide which of them would bathe. Before they could make their decision, however, Frail Asha fell to the ground. Exhausted by their struggle to the summit, she was close to death. Her three friends would have carried her to the fountain, but Asha was in mortal agony and begged them not to touch her. Then Athida hastened to pick all those herbs she thought most helpful, and mixed them in Sir Luckless's gourd of water, and poured the potion into Asha's mouth. At once Asha was able to stand. What was more, all symptoms of her dread malady had vanished. "'I am cured,' she cried. "'I have no need of the fountain. Let Athida bathe.' But Athida was busy collecting more herbs in her apron. "'If I can cure this disease, I shall earn gold a plenty. Let Amida bathe.' Sir Luckless bowed and gestured Amida towards the fountain, but she shook her head. The stream had washed away all regret for her lover, and she saw now that he had been cruel and faithless, and that it was happiness enough to be rid of him. "'Good sir, you must bathe as a reward for all your chivalry,' she told Sir Luckless. So the knight clanked forward in the last rays of the setting sun, and bathed in the fountain of fair fortune, astonished that he was the chosen one of hundreds, and giddy with his incredible luck. As the sun fell below the horizon, Sir Luckless emerged from the waters with the glory of his triumph upon him, and flung himself in his rusted armor at the feet of Amata, who was the kindest and most beautiful woman he had ever beheld. Flushed with success, he begged for her hand and her heart, and Amata, no less delighted, realized that she had found a man worthy of them. The three witches and the knight set off down the hill together, arm in arm, and all four led long and happy lives, and none of them ever knew or suspected that the fountain's waters carried no enchantment at all.